In this documentary, you'll discover how Viking families survived minus 30 degrees Celsius winters inside longhouses built from wood, earth, and fire. From shared warmth with animals to handcrafted heating systems, this journey reveals survival by design, not luck. Make tea, get comfortable, and enjoy the adventure. The winter cold arrives without warning. Outside, the wind cuts across barren hills where temperatures plunge instantaneously to minus 30 degrees Celsius. Against this lethal environment, a massive structure of turf and earth stretches 30 meters across the hostile landscape, a silent sentinel against the frozen void. Inside, a single fire glows, illuminating a family and their livestock near its weak heat. Yet, the building holds a warmth that defies the brutal arithmetic of survival. 54 kilograms of birchwood burned daily should vanish into the sub-zero air within hours. Instead, the interior remains stable at 12 degrees Celsius. This is the Viking Longhouse. It functions not merely as a shelter warmed by fire, but as a complex thermal machine engineered for absolute, relentless survival. Yet, the thermal physics of this immense structure defy simple explanation. How did the Norse achieve this miraculous stabilization and endure the extreme, relentless chill outside? The rise of the Longhouse coincides with the Viking Age, a historical window spanning from 800 to 1050 CE, a period historians have labeled the medieval climate anomaly. Global temperatures during this era were marginally warmer, enabling the Norse to expand into Greenland and farm the marginal lands previously deemed uninhabitable. But this relative warmth was dangerously deceptive. Catastrophic cold snaps still plunge temperatures down to negative 30 degrees Celsius, demanding total architectural resilience. Therefore, the longhouse was not engineered merely for average weather. It was a thermal fortress built specifically to endure the worst, most lethal nights of the deepest winter. These were the brutal nights when exposed livestock froze solid outside, when food stores turned to ice, testing the absolute limit of Norse ingenuity. When the climate began its inevitable shift centuries later, the little ice age descended, and even a single degree drop proved enough to shatter their fragile margin of survival. The thermal machine had been running at maximum capacity all along. Once that threshold was crossed, the great Greenland settlements simply collapsed and vanished. Yet the longhouse adapted to its environment with brutal efficiency, leading to stark differences between the Scandinavian mainland, rich in timber, and the treeless North Atlantic islands. Where trees were virtually absent, builders cut dense blocks of peat, called hanaus, and strips of grass sod, stacking them into walls over a meter thick to trap the precious heat. The structure was not merely built upon the land, it was partially sunk into the earth and often nestled against hillsides to exploit the planet's natural insulation. Above, the roof was a multi-layered marvel an inner sheath of peat with the grass facing inward, topped by a remarkably thick layer of compacted soil. The final exterior layer consisted of fresh turf with the grass facing upward, protected by thin twigs placed beneath the sod to prevent wooden rafter rot. This complex layering of earth and turf created a structure possessing enormous thermal mass built from dense, heavy materials sourced directly from the local environment. These thick walls absorbed heat slowly from the interior fire and inhabitants, releasing it even more gradually to stabilize the temperature against violent external swings. But this reliance on dense earth and turf was not a technological step backward. It outperformed timber in one critical dimension, preventing heat from leaving. In regions like the North Atlantic colonies, fuel became desperately scarce after initial settlement led to rapid deforestation and ecological collapse. Where sustainable fuel was impossible, reducing heat loss mattered far more than generating additional warmth through combustion or ceaseless labor. If the system cannot sustain a steady fuel supply, the only path to collective survival is making thermal heat loss nearly impossible. Looking inward, 
the longhouse structure was meticulously organized according to a three-aisle floor plan, supported by two robust rows of wooden columns. The floor below the aisles was composed of packed earth, often mixed with ash to control moisture. Between the robust columns, raised wooden platforms spanned the interior length. These essential platforms were strategically elevated half a meter to a meter and a half above the ground. This specific elevation was carefully engineered not for decoration, but for survival. Because colder, denser air naturally settles at ground level, the platform structure strategically lifted inhabitants out of the deadly sub-zero chill zone that perpetually hugged the floor. By maximizing this simple physical principle, the Vikings effectively created a stable, localized microclimate entirely contained within the larger, colder thermal shell of the longhouse. Modern experimental archaeology has confirmed this ancient wisdom, showing that the critical temperature differences between the platform and the floor could ultimately determine the threshold for survival. The Norse understood that survival demanded extreme thermal efficiency. Openings in the wall would hemorrhage precious heat, forcing them to seal the structure almost completely. Light and necessary ventilation came only from the vindauga, literally the wind eye. These controlled vents near the roof minimized cold air infiltration. Hot gases from the central fire rose immediately, accumulating in a smoky layer near the roof. This allowed noxious smoke to escape through the vent. While fresh, cold air entered at lower levels, the ingenious stratification ensured that the warmest, breathable air remained trapped below the toxic ceiling layer. At the heart of the structure was the Langelder, the long fire. It provided essential light, cooking capability, and emergency localized warmth, but fuel demands were staggering. Studies confirmed that even during summer, daily household needs required over 54 kilograms of birch wood, a devastating drain on local forests. Projecting that staggering demand across a harsh winter revealed the unsustainable scale of reliance on combustion alone. Deforestation followed Norse expansion. The central hearth simply could not be the primary heat source. They relied instead on the animals, who were, fundamentally, living, breathing furnaces. A single cow generates substantial metabolic heat simply by existing. Multiply that output by a small herd contained within the heavily insulated envelope. This heat was constant, requiring no labor or scarce resources. The Fehus transformed a biological necessity into a powerful and essential thermal asset. This ingenious engineering, prioritizing warmth, demanded a heavy price. These enclosed thermal systems created profound and unavoidable environmental trade-offs. Smoke from the open hearth accumulated within the upper atmosphere. Archaeological evidence reveals chronic respiratory damage and scarred lung tissue in almost every resident. With no windows to hemorrhage precious heat, darkness was constant. The interior world existed solely within the narrow, flickering radius of the Great Long Fire. The confined atmosphere was constantly thick with the powerful scent of damp earth, wood smoke, and livestock. Even at 12 degrees Celsius, this was merely survival, not comfort. Modern humans would find these conditions intolerable, yet discomfort was irrelevant, for the longhouse was designed solely for the relentless prevention of death, not luxury. The longhouse was more than engineering, it was consecrated ground. The Langelder connected the dwellers to Norse cosmology itself. This domestic hearth represented imposed order against the chaos of the elements. It was the controlled flame, holding back the endless, frozen void of the outside world. Flanking the high seat were the Onvegisulur, carved pillars inscribed with divine symbols channeling protection from the ancestors. Early settlers performed a profound ritual, casting these pillars overboard. They claimed the land where the consecrated wood finally washed ashore, binding family fate to that place. The longhouse was thus both consecrated and immensely functional. 
Its long-term success depended on the integration of four essential survival systems. The first system was structural, passive insulation provided by the dense walls of turf and earth, built robustly more than a meter thick. These heavy materials absorbed heat slowly, but released it even slower, acting as an enormous thermal flywheel against the violent external cold. The second essential system turned biological necessity into thermal profit, livestock heating. Animals were brought inside during the harshest months. A single cow generates constant metabolic heat simply by existing. Multiply that output by a small herd, and the animals become living, self-sustaining furnaces. The third system was active fire management through thermal stratification. The central fire's hot gases immediately rose to accumulate in a layer near the roof ridge. Crucially, beneath this accumulating haze of hot gases, the air remained dense, cooler, and crucially, breathable for the inhabitants sleeping on the raised platforms. The smoke was vented through controlled gaps near the ridge, known as the Vindauga, or wind eye, a deliberate design that became the origin of our modern English word window. The fire, known as the Langeld, served more than merely practical uses. It was central to Norse cosmology, symbolizing imposed order against the frozen void of chaos. Flanking the chieftain's high seat stood the carved on Vega Sulur, pillars inscribed with divine symbols that were believed to channel ancestral protection into the structure. Early settlers performed a binding ritual throwing these consecrated pillars overboard upon sighting new land, claiming the territory where they eventually washed ashore. The longhouse was fundamentally a space of imposed order, simultaneously functional engineering and a deeply consecrated structure channeling ancestral protection. Its survival hinged on the successful integration of four essential thermal systems working in perfect, constant synergy. First, passive insulation provided by the thick turf and earth walls prevented heat loss, making the surrounding land part of the architecture. Second, biological heating, transforming livestock into living furnaces. And third, active fire management, stratifying warm air in the inhabited zone. The fourth critical system was personal insulation, using furs and heavy wool, the final defense against the constant creeping cold. The genius of the longhouse lay in its critical integration. Remove any single component, the turf, the fire, the livestock, and the entire survival engine failed. When the Little Ice Age descended centuries later, dropping temperatures by only one or two degrees, that razor-thin margin for error vanished. The thermal machine broke. Though the Greenland settlements eventually vanished, for centuries the longhouse sustained life holding back the chaos and serving as the consecrated heart of Norse survival. It was a brutal, complex architecture that transformed basic elements, earth, fire, and biological life into a robust, powerful engine of northern survival. Modern experimental archaeology and thermal modeling confirm the truth. The longhouse was far more thermally effective than previously thought, a forgotten masterpiece of circumpolar engineering.